let's do a little bit of an introduction to MongoDB. What is it? Well, it's a database, sure. Um, it is flexible. It's probably more flexible than other databases you've used in the past. Uh, it is easy to use. We deal in objects rather than in rows and columns and tables. And it lacks that rigid structure that um, you may be familiar with in the tabular world. When we store and uh, manipulate data in MongoDB, we do so in JSON documents. That's what you see on the right there. Um, you may be used to tabular solutions like relate, relational database management systems. And in those, when you uh, create relationships between data elements, you typically do that using joins. Uh, by its very nature, nature, tabular databases store data in tables and they separate those tables, separate the data between tables, and join them when you want to reference all of the data for a in particular individual. So in this example, we're representing relationships between people and their cars by joining those two tables, the person table and the car table. Now with MongoDB, we represent relationships in a slightly different way. We embed that data. So you see the very same information represented on the right that you see on the left. So Paul Miller lives in the city of London. There's his uh, location. All of that is represented in a JSON document. A JSON document is nothing more than uh, it begins with a curly brace, it ends with a curly brace, and in the middle you have key-value pairs. These key-value pairs in MongoDB can be quite interesting in that they can be strings, of course, they can be numeric, they can be arrays, and they can even be sub-documents. So you have rich, uh, rich document capabilities from within MongoDB. We're going to talk about Atlas as we go through this hackathon guide. Atlas is a database as a service which allows you to deploy and manage your MongoDB instances very easily. Uh, the database instances themselves will live in one of the three major cloud providers, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. Um, you can choose at the time you deploy. Um, you can register and begin using MongoDB Atlas at cloud.mongodb.com. Again, you can deploy, manage, scale, backup, and distribute your database resources from within MongoDB Atlas. We're also going to talk about MongoDB Stitch. What is it? Well, it's a database, sorry, it's a backend as a service. So Stitch is a backend as a service. It gives you the ability to query your MongoDB resources from anywhere, whether that be from, uh, from an application that's running on an iOS device or an Android device from the web uh, or for your IoT implementation. It gives you access to functions. These functions can live within Stitch um, in a sort of a functions as a service uh, model. You may be familiar with AWS Lambda or Azure Functions. Stitch is quite similar in, in functionality uh, with those products from, from the other cloud providers. We give you the ability to leverage triggers. So within Stitch, you have the ability to react to changes that are taking place in your database. So for example, if you want to trigger an SMS text message as a result of an insert, you can do that right from within Stitch using triggers. We'll also have the ability to leverage mobile sync. This gives you the ability to have a mobile version of MongoDB running on your device and synchronize that with the cloud version. This is what MongoDB Stitch looks like from an architectural perspective. You leverage native SDKs, uh, JavaScript, React, React Native, Android, iOS. These are running on your device. Uh, you access a RESTful API, which gives you access to third-party services, like the one I mentioned from Twilio. There are others. Um, gives you access to those functions that you write, and those functions can live within Stitch. These will also give you access to integrated rules, which provide access to and, and granular control over the access to documents within MongoDB. And all of this lives within Atlas, and all of it uh, rides on top of the three major cloud providers. So in this hackathon guide, we'll cover eight basic parts. This is part one, the introduction. From here, we'll go into registering for an Atlas account. We'll deploy a database cluster. We'll add a database user. We'll configure some security parameters like IP whitelists. Then we'll connect to the database using Compass, and I'll show you how to connect to your database from the shell, from your terminal, and then we'll wrap things up. So that's it for now. Good luck on your hackathon journey, and I'll talk to you soon.